Sometimes, surprises are fantastic. Finding a $50 bill in the street. Hearing that you're in line for a promotion. Bumping into an old friend in the supermarket you haven't seen in years. At other times, however, the unexpected is not as desirable. Losing your wallet. Discovering a health malady. Hearing about the sudden death of a loved one. We live in a world of uncertainty. At any moment, such surprises can transform our day. Rabbi Dov Bear Pinson is a scholar and author of several books on Jewish mysticism. He will address the topic of uncertainty, how it affects our daily life, and the Jewish approach to embracing uncertainty and making the most of each day. Purim is called Purim for the name of the lot. The name Purim in, in the ancient language of Persian or Akkadian is the word that represents lottery. And like the story of the Megillah, the story of the Scroll of Esther teaches us that Haman, Haman, desired to annihilate the Jewish people. And he threw a lottery to decide the time when his decree should take place. So this is the simple reading of what the story of the Megillah, the story of the Scroll of Esther is, that it's called Purim for the name of the lottery. In general, the inner structure of the Megillah story and the inner structure of the Purim narrative is a battle between a concept, a consciousness of randomness versus an awareness of purpose and, and the opposite of random. And if we look through the story, we'll see that Haman, Haman represents the quality of randomness, that things are like a lottery, which in a lottery, it's not dependent on the person initiative or a person's participation in the lottery. It's just a lottery, and if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. And because Haman, 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 represents this quality of randomness, he becomes the embodiment of the attribute and the nationhood of Amalek. Amalek, the Kabbalistic reading of the word Amalek is that it has the same numeric value for the word Safek, which is doubt. And doubt means uncertainty and things that are random. The opposite of that is the certainty and the positive purpose that we see in our lives. And the story of Purim, on a very simple reading, would be that if you look through the, through the narrative of Purim, you'll see that there's nothing miraculous occurs in the story of Purim. It's unlike the story of Hanukkah, where a miracle occurs with oil, or the story of the going out of Egypt, where something miraculous happens. Nothing miraculous happens. In fact, it seems to be a straight-out narrative of n natural events, where there's a very powerful king, that on the advice of his advisor kills his wife, and then this advisor advises him to kill another people, and then on the advice of his new wife decides to kill his advisor. And it's just a natural progression of a very beautiful and interesting novel. In fact, so much so does this appear to be a natural event that the name of Hashem, God's name, the infinite, Yudke Vavke, does not appear in the Megillah at all. So, overall, when we look at life, there are two perspectives, the two ways we can see things. We can see things the way they appear to be in its randomness, and that things are unrelated and unconnected to each other, and just, these are just random events that happen to you. Something happens today, the next thing, another day, something happens to you, and these things are in, not connected with each other. The story of Purim, which represents the, the, un, the undoing of this randomness, of the suffix, of the doubt, is to see purpose and to see meaning. And this because we come from that place of doubt and uncertainty, this, is, this allows us to be joyful. Because there's no greater joy than the resolution of doubt and uncertainty. A simple example is you don't know where your keys are, and you're trying to leave the house, and then you find your keys, and there's a great joy. Because the joy is reclaiming something that was lost, and it was uncertain where you're going to find it, and then you find it. But if this is the case, and this is, the, this is what the story of Purim is all about, about finding within the natural, within the, the events of the natural, to finding the hand of Hashem, within the randomness, to finding the purpose. And th that would be understood also in terms of with Esther. The name Esther is, which literally means Esther, from the, from the Akkadian word, which means a star, which also is related in the Hebrew to the word Esther, which is hidden. So Hadassah, which is the original name of Esther, hides her identity. She lives as a queen of Ahasuerus, the mighty king hiding her identity, and she hides her identity in such a way that she even calls herself 
a name that actually also means hidden. So it's a double level of hiding. And the story of the Megillah, which the word Megillah in Hebrew means to reveal. Megillah is revealing. Esther is the hidden. So Megillah Esther, the revealing of the hidden is to reveal the hand of Hashem, the hand of God, within the details of the natural. But if this was the case, and this is what we're celebrating on Purim, and that would be it, then we should actually call Purim not Purim, which would suggest randomness, because that's the idea of a lottery, but the opposite. We should call Purim a name that suggests the opposite of a lottery. Now, there is another interpretation from the Radak and others that say that the word Purim has nothing to do with the word lottery, and it has to do with the Hebrew word for the farer, which is to break of thunder, to break apart, which is a decree, a negative decree, and that was broken apart. But if the literal interpretation of the word Purim is related to the lottery, why call the miracle, or why call the holiday that we celebrate on the name that represents randomness, if the whole idea of Purim is to see within the randomness, within the doubt, within the uncertainty, to see the certainty, to see the purpose, then we should call Purim by its name that suggests something of purpose. And the deeper teaching of this is that there are two ways how do we relate to uncertainty in our life and the idea of doubt, of being uncertain about certain events and appearing and that life appears to be in its random state. And transformation can occur on two levels. One level of transformation is when you come from a place of certainty. I'm sorry, when you come from a place of uncertainty, and then you break out of the uncertainty and you see a certainty. So, for example, let's say you see your life and you say, I'm doubtful and I'm uncertain about the course of my life or the way my life is unfolding. So then you look back and you reflect. So you live forward and understand backward. And then you say, but you know what? If I look back at my life, I see that all these events that seem to be random and inconsequential, now when I look back at them, I understand that they're all serendipitous and they all lead to a certain point in my life that I am actually at this present moment and therefore I'm very grateful. So life is lived forward and understood backward. The forward living is where you're living in a place of randomness. You're living in a place of uncertainty. And then you're looking backward and you're saying, looking at my life, and seeing the patterns of my life that even though they didn't appear to have any pattern, at this present moment I can look back and see the patterns. That's one level of transformation of uncertainty to certainty. But that's not a full transformation of uncertainty to certainty because that level of transformation is when you're turning uncertainty into certainty. The deeper level of Vinahapahu, of the transformation of Adar, and the transformation of Purim story, is that you take the quality of itself of uncertainty and that itself becomes a positive quality. The ulai, which the Zohar says maybe, which is the level of shechina, is itself that something that becomes a powerful tool in our spiritual growth. So there are two ways how to do this. Either we look at uncertainty in our life and doubt in our life, and we try to get away from it. And we say, I'm very certain this is what I want to be doing, and if there's any uncertainty in my life, that's, that's frightening, and therefore I have to transform that or leave that paradigm and move into a place of certainty. There's a deeper, deeper way of transformation is that we enter the place of uncertainty, of the doubt, and the doubt itself becomes freeing. Because when a person is stuck in the certain certainty of their, of their life, and I say, I understand what I understand to be true, and I understand who I am, and that's an absolute in my reality, then there's no, there's no possibility of growth because you've already died, essentially, because you've told yourself that this is who you are and that's the certainty. The possibility of growth, the possibility of any movement, is looking at life and seeing the uncertainty. But the uncertainty is a positive uncertainty. The uncertainty is there's certainty that I have up until this point, and now there's a freeing element of my life that says I can produce anything that I want. So there's holy doubt, and unholy doubt. Unholy doubt and unholy uncertainty is when it's crippling because I don't know what to do, therefore I do nothing. Freeing doubt is I don't know what to do, but I can do everything. And there's a possibility of all possibilities. And that's the deeper level of the transformation. Not this coming from the place where I see the uncertainty and try to get to the point of certainty because there are uncertainties in life that will continuously be uncertain because the, every time we're engaged in life and the more we're involved in life, and we're participating in life, there will always come up uncertainties or things that we didn't expect. But we embrace, when we embrace the unexpected, and because of the unexpected, we 
tr create new realities for ourselves that are completely beautiful and gorgeous and unbelievably creative in terms of our development spiritually and mentally and emotionally, then we're taking those uncertainties in our life and we're using them as a spiritual tool to growth. And that's the higher level of transformation. So again, there are, two, there are these two aspects. One aspect is that we overcome safek, doubt, helman, randomness, lottery, by seeing the certainty, by seeing the end result. The other one is to be actually in the place of the randomness, in the place of the lottery, in the place of the doubt, but the doubt is not a doubt that's crippling and doesn't allow for any possibilities, but the doubt itself allows me to do everything.